Good afternoon, everyone, and you're all very welcome to the DICE conference here at MIE this afternoon. My name is Barbara O'Toole. I'm the DICE lecturer here in Merino, and I'm going to chair this event over the course of the next three hours. It's a great honor for MIE to host this third day of the hybrid DICE conference, Global Citizenship Education in a Changing Policy Landscape. Here at MIE today, our conference takes a local lens to GCED with a focus on social justice, human rights and equality in relation to travellers in Ireland. With our theme of Traveller Voices in Irish Education, we have a very exciting lineup of speakers this afternoon who are going to encourage you to critically reflect, to question and to develop your own inclusive practice as educators. The DICE project, funded by Irish Aid at the Department of Foreign Affairs, is a vital part of our work here at Merino Institute of Education. Indeed, we've had a very long and productive relationship with this national initiative since it began in 2003. DICE seeks to promote global solidarity, human rights, and sustainable development, and to support people to challenge discrimination and inequality locally and globally. I want to acknowledge the ongoing support of Irish Aid for the DICE project over the last 20 years, support which has been critical to embedding global citizen education in initial teacher education in Ireland. And I want to take an extract from Owen de Vardoon's beautiful book, Why the Moon Travels. He writes, many who speak about us do not know us. What is mostly known are the issues that the community faces, such as access to accommodation and educational pathways, barriers to employment and mental health challenges. While we do experience these challenges to a high, highly disproportionate degree, they are not us, nor the weight of us. What most do not see is the beauty that burns and beats in the heart of our community. A bonfire of remembrance that blazes high on the hilltops of our collective spaces and strong in the hearts of every home. And he says, may this book be another crack in the wall that too often divides us. We work with 19 schools and I am an education support worker along with um, a very small team. We have 19 schools that we work across in primary schools and secondary schools. And along with that, we also work with universities. Uh, we work with preschools. So there's a lot of stuff outside of our core 19 schools that we do, but we uh, work really well together, obviously. But one of the big things that we do is the storytelling projects. We introduce them as a pilot ourselves in one of the local schools. And it was such a hit that we actually developed a program out of it that works up over three weeks. And in that we go into primary schools. There is so much beauty in our culture that people don't get to see. Um, and the storytelling projects showcase that. In the second week, we focus specifically just on the storytelling. So Travers are a minority ethnic group. We are indigenous to the island of Ireland. Um, our ethnicity as uh, Teresa said, was formally recognised on the 1st of March 2017. I was actually in the Dáil when um, that was happening in the gallery. And while no specific policies and things didn't change a lot legally from that point, I can't express how much of a symbolic thing that it was to have our ethnicity recognised because up until that point, different policies that had been introduced by, by different governments in Ireland had looked at our assimilation and, and our cultural genocide. And there are more travellers in Rowan and training for work programmes, but we need more travel teachers at every level of education. As I said, the likes of um, the likes of MIE here are putting their money where their mouth is, as they say. You know, so the fact that stuff like that can be done, if you put the work in to support travellers, you will see more travellers in different positions across society. This is our vision, which is for a society that recognises children as independent writers, thinkers and creators and that truly values the arts in the lives of all children. 
And our mission is to create opportunities for children to collaborate with artists and to publish and promote the artwork and insights that emerge from these encounters. We are very much a publishing organization and the books are really at the heart of our, of our work. But also uh, it is very much about the creative process and it's about the uh, artistic experience. So all of our work is about providing a space for children's individual creative expression and for them to have opportunities to work alongside professional artists. We were developing, I suppose, culture specific uh, resources, but also within an intercultural context. And I think that's very important um, in terms of recognizing the value of the books um, themselves and their potential within the classroom is that they really can support um, learning within an intercultural context. Can't Lose Can't, of course, is the first Pictionary developed on the Can't language. Um, and it was my colleague, Marion Brown, who was based in Kildare at the time, who was also studying the Can't for her PhD thesis. And her work was based on the collections of uh, Porig Magrena, a folklorist. So Francesca is a member of the traveling community and she is on her fourth year in uh, the Limerick College of Art. So we are so blessed uh, to have her. And we really understand the importance of the travelers leading out on these projects. This is a whole key area that we are now finally able to um, you know, deliver on. And what you see here, and I've just drawn it over the, the last decade, it's the notion of the other, okay? Um, and the otherness or travelers in education as outsiders. Now I'd say that's from near, nearly 10 years ago now. So we would hope up to current times that would have changed. But what literature tells us is that travelers are the, or, or traveler children are identified as the group most deprived of formal education in the country. You don't want to fail anybody. And I think perhaps that is a failing of us primary school teachers is that you always want to do the right thing and be inclusive of everyone. And sometimes it's just ignorance and not knowing and not being aware of something you say or the cultural awareness. I, I didn't have it, you know, and it's those deficit discourses that are predominantly in um, education that harm the children. But it's a program to help uh, Irish travellers um, access third or initial teacher education, OK, primary and post primary. I had decided to do this because I wanted to, I suppose, support an inclusive curriculum. So when I say inclusive curriculum, it's, you know, when we're doing our fortnightly plans or if you're a student teacher and you have to do five or six week planning or whatever it might be, that we're looking at our subjects, our art, our music, um, and we're saying, you know, am I... Are the, are the resources I'm using representative of every child in the classroom and every child in the country, you know, not just you don't have to have a, um, a traveler student in your classroom or, um, you know, t children of, of different relig religions or cultures in your classroom. But are you still talking about those other backgrounds? So it's not just waiting for the traveler child and going, oh, look, there's one there. I think there's one. I might just do something. No, it's about how am I educating everyone about different cultures, different religions, different backgrounds to encourage the sharing of traveler history and culture, because I know how rich it is, you know, and, you know, when teachers would say to me, oh, what do I do or how do I do this? And um, I, I suppose I'm in it. So I know the, the, the musicians and the artists and the history, but maybe they just don't. Because as Miriam said, sometimes people have never been even exposed to someone from the community. Or as Kathleen had said, there's often children in the classroom that are from the traveling community and teachers don't know because they're too afraid to speak up. So, and I've also popped the link because I'm sure um, that these slides maybe might be shared with people for, um, so if they want to access the resource. So yeah, in the resource, there's research. I popped in um, all the research I could find about the traveling community. And it's gonna have all those articles that you guys have talked about with the statistics in it, and it's quite negative. And, and then there's also research by travelers, which I'd recommend people to look at too, because that's important. It's traveler led and it, it, it's, it's, um, so it's there for anyone who wants to uh, look at that. So uh, it's, it's nice as well for uh, teachers that want to learn more.
It's been some afternoon. Uh, when we started out at two o'clock today, I, I've just glanced down at my notes a few minutes ago that what we hoped we were going to do is to encourage you to critically reflect, to question and to develop your own inclusive practice as educators. And I hugely want to thank the speakers here this afternoon because I think that you have really done all of those things. I want to thank Mary, Joe, Kathleen, Anne-Marie and Miriam because your talks today were very powerful, really rich and really important. Uh, and I think that, um, you know, the, um, we've opened a conversation here, a discussion that I hope will continue well past this afternoon.